Now we're going to break down EG's attack on Fracture because I think they are an actually really smart team that uses so much utility combos uh, that get them advantages. It's also very interesting to see Sova being used on Fracture uh, because of the fact that it gives you a lot of ability to destroy like Sentinel utility. But in this case, Loud doesn't play that Sentinel, so it doesn't really matter that much. There's a lot of info from Loud, by the way, here. And with the duration here of the race boom, but being uh, smaller, you can just literally dodge that. It would, previous nerf, sorry, previous version of uh, Boombot would have gotten the tag on the way back. Ooh, yeah. You can see how the race Boombot nerf affects it. Oh my god, come. Sheesh, that was close. He would have survived one bullet though. Unless it's a headshot. What a double kill, triple kill even from Com. But nothing interesting in the pistol round yet. So, second round. Interesting buy from Ejim. As they have three rifles, two Spectres, so no one can pick anything. So it's a bit of a commitment uh, with the assumption that you that you use... Um, sorry, that you, all of your players are alive, then it's not a problem. But if they, someone dies, they can't really build up economy that much. And Boostia just gives a gun. What was that a gun? And that was a, a rifle, an actual rifle on the Lurker. That is a problem. I like the fact that wait this is loud's viper viper wall oh my god so this is something that I explained a lot of times this viper wall that is being used here by the defenders is literally a wall that Boaster from Fnatic invented for attacking and people still don't understand why Boaster used it for attacking and not for defense it's so funny man it's actually so funny. Stunned up, tries to fall away, find a safe position. Loud and knocking at the door now. Stunned to follow. He's in danger, needs some help. Ethan can't do it. Aspas is there. Loud trying to get dangerous here. Demon one. Oh, Woof. Woof. This guy is monstrous. That got so dangerous, Mike. Like, let's so talk about what one. That's ridiculous. Uh, Demon wants to fall. All right, let's see. First real round. Um, And as you can see right now, the cash dictates that two players need to play with pistols because they didn't have any player to pick up guns in the previous round. So they pay a little bit of the power that they... Uh, sorry, sorry, how do I explain that? EG's buy on round two allowed them to have a higher win rate against an eco. But if anything fails, they have a lower chance with converting the bonus. Although... We know that EG just converts every single bonus anyway. So let's let's pay attention. Again, the same Viper Wall from the defense, which can be abused, but EG goes towards A. The uh, arrow clears dish, like every single position. So it gives a lot of space and allows to farm the orbs. And Com has now the ult for round three, which is insane. Eight orb for round three is absolutely monstrous. I would not assume that they're gonna use the Hunter's Fury as an initiation for the round, unless they have a plan with utility to like get a free kill. Let's see. I, I would assume maybe Ethan goes for a stun, like for tower or something like that. R disclaimer: I didn't watch this match before. Like stun for tower with this Kildren Anderson landing on stairs might be deadly. Let's see if they actually do that. Okay, they use the paint shots and nanosons from that, and then... Yeah, it, it wasn't exactly what I thought it's gonna be. I thought the, the ultimate is gonna be used for tower because it's so tight, but it actually was used for sight. Such a nice play. So essentially what they do is... Essentially what they do is they do something like this. They stun the tower because it's so easy to just essentially stun everything, right? It's just like 
If I'm not mistaken, it was something like this. Like that. Right, so it covers almost everything, or, or everything, depending on the exact position. Let me actually check where the breach was stunning from. Ah, from here. So it's like this into this position. Right? Yeah. So they do that. Then they do paint shells that are landing over here and affect this area. Then they have nanosomes lineups from here that are landing over here. Right? Or maybe here. It's not, unfortunately not visible on the minimap. Let me check. I don't think we're going to see it. And a recon arrow as well. In, you know what's funny is that the recon arrow change is actually big because it doesn't get destroyed by the paint shell. I, I think it's... Uh, I think it's not enough bounces though, because it should land on this, on this, uh, on not on this wall over here, because it lands over here, right? But it should end on the right side. Okay. Do we see anything? No, we don't. Okay. And then the ultimate from Sova is just essentially being used to clear the site. When so when they leave tower, right? When they leave tower with all that utility, Sova just get clears on the site. I was thinking they're gonna just use the Sova for, for tower because it's so that's such a tight space that the Sova gets gets taxed there. But it's a different kind of um, plan that they had. But it's so well planned, planned out. It just takes space so much, you know? So that's very nice. You can see the nano in the replay. Uh... Okay, so it lands like this. So it covers, yeah. So so literally the entire tower is, is covered and they have to be on site. Yeah. Hello, Dungi. How are you meant to be comfortable Bonus, with yeah, it's... Again, this is invested from so deep as well. Loud can't uh, aggress onto this. And it's a very short list. Well played by AG. Pressured Loud, who's taken maps against Loud. And AG are one of those teams here. Very exclusive list. Some of the best that we've seen throughout Valorant thus far. But converting it into a win is a different thing altogether. This is map one. EG Bridge Aftershock was used as well in tower. I didn't see, even see it because it was a little bit of an overkill. Yeah, Bustio is um, a little bit caught off guard. I think he needs to be, play a little bit safer because this is not the first time he's actually dead. They go one for one is fine, especially specifically with the old. But now come with this lurk on the Sova, man. Again, doesn't matter which agent you play. Sometimes the runs will dictate the way you have to play the game. Nice, Molly. That was really well, like tight space. Okay, so they know the breach is coming from main. They know about the Viper coming from Rope, and they don't know the Omen unless they remember the Paranoia angle? Yeah. And the player in CT, so in this case Com, his job was to stay alive. That's literally it. Why is this not working? Like, this player just needs to stay alive, and that's about it. Nothing else matters. Like, the players, when the players on the side have contact, uh, Com swings and reclears. And essentially guarantees the round. It's so easy to take the space here with with um, comes Sova on dish. Wait, did he use the arrow? Where, where's the arrow? Oh, it went for Sands this time. Okay, interesting. Because I thought he's gonna use it for dish, but since they are going with four players into dish, they're actually using the the uh, sans arrow. Jogamo a little bit overheated here. Okay. Imagine, imagine if Com would have used the same arrow for dish as he used before, it would probably make a huge difference. So. One would have to ask, why 
I'm assuming they use the arrow on Sands just because they think the sheer amount of numbers of players that they have on this should gonna be enough to, for it to be cleared. It's kind of weird. Well, they have the Killjoy lockdown. They have the Ethan's Rolling Thunder. Most players, this is why you see also uh, most teams, sorry, most teams use the Killjoy lockdown still in B Underground for known reasons. So this is why you see Loud literally going in into Arcade because they want to take the space so they have a possibility of going into Underground to counter that ultimate. But that's not something that EG is going to do at all, right? <coughs> I'm sorry for that. <coughs> and it's fantastic because Com literally confirmed that with this arrow. Literally confirmed that with the arrow, so they know that they pushed into they pushed into arcade, most likely leaving B defenseless. So they read into that. That is so well read by EG. I love that. And now they have a trap set up, right? Because they didn't go there for this first second. They went from B long. So how do you push down into underground? Because Loud didn't assume they're gonna go for it because they didn't see anyone in arcade. This is like a counterplay to a counterplay. Very well done. Now the angle doesn't benefit those. And the aftershock a lot. Oh my god. Alright, Ethan, you're the MVP for me. This is the second time. This is the second time. When I watch EG play Fracture, and Ethan is just single handedly winning them rounds with his utility. So, to explain how what happened here. In the beginning of the round, Loud is reading into potential play from uh from EG. Since EG has the killjoy lockdown, typically you have forces coming in from arcade to deny the push from the defenders. So they can get the space into underground. And because Sova puts the arrow to confirm that they are pushing here, and they're not playing arcade, they're just playing B long. They do a delayed push into this, into making F Loud think that they're not going for the B, B play, and instead they're gonna most likely go into the A play, so this crunch doesn't meet opposition, but then they go for that B, B killjoy lockdown, but from the other side, which is not typical, and because of that, Loud is just being st st like stuck in the position on on bench essentially and are being put into a trap like it, it, it's so well planned by eg it's like a loud has a counter for a potential play that eg might do but literally eg reads that and makes a counter play for the same for the for that play you know like it, it's really well done it's really well done big fan of this Time out from loud, okay. What do I have here? Uh, no north control. Uh, any ultimates? Demon one with the ult. So no one should be standing in tower. Because I'm assuming because of that, we're not even gonna see Brimson ultimate being used on tower. Let's see. Well, Sadak actually goes into tower. No fear from him. Let's see. I'm assuming. That, the, that EG is going to wait for the second cycle to come in because they lost this uh, the stun from Breach and uh, not taking any space actively. So they're going to freeze for those 30 seconds and then with the second cycle, they're just going to attack and initiate with the with the Brimstone ult. Let's just see how they do it. It wouldn't surprise me if Lester Sadak give up a little bit of sight here. Wait, wait for those three players to actually set up and, and come through and flank if the execute on the full util on race. There's the fault line. So flash onto Kabi. There's the ult on the tower. I don't know sure where the stun went in. I think on Canteen. 
danger's gonna come in. Bucio seems all too aware, but the stun's in. They're in danger. Oh my god, that was a lot of utility being used by cars in the... Oh my god, come! Punishing to Kalanzin there, but Team B1. He's still alive. A 1v2. He's got to know where Sadak is. Two, he's maybe a little bit harder to pin down. He's only got 14 seconds to find this. Where does he plant? Jump spot, spots one. It's not a comfortable plant. He's gonna get it down for now. Closing the gap though, you gotta respect this man. A danger! A danger! Oh my god, dude. They can't, can't really do much about that. I can't really do much. Like maybe not ideal like timings and and spot and and spacing for for loud, but it's like 52 HP, man. 52 HP, man. Nuts. Fucking nuts. Even at the first smoke. Right. You don't often win. What do we have here? Sova ult again. Will we see the same plan? I think we're gonna see the same plan with the tower and uh, space on B side being affected by the com ult, right? Let's see. Let's see. Oi, Bustio. Oi, Bustio. Is he dead? Hey, that's attacking smoke. What the fuck just happened in this round? Aspa's just over aggressive alone, no trades, spacing is awful for loud. Ooh, okay, fantastic read by the way. By Bustio here to go for that all for A. Oh, that's... Seems awesome. Instant re-clear of A main. I like that because it allows Breach to reposition. And they now hear the footsteps. They know about two players coming in from A. Now probably even three. Okay. Oh, Calm over Stings. Welcome. Dude, if Calm just waits for that stun to come in, they have three kills. Oh, that, that, was, that was a throw. There's no way Jogum wins this, no? Did you watch part of the DX game too? DX plays tomorrow. Alright, what else do we have here? The same planning as before because they didn't use the Sova, Sova ult. So it's gonna be the same thing. Busio's gonna go. Ah, he's a little bit more reluctant because of the first push. But yeah, they're gonna do the same stuff, right? They're gonna go for the Nano Storm and Tower with the lineup from the from uh, from Belong, right? Look at Loud. They actually learned. Like nah, nah. Let's not stand on B. Let's play retake. Loud's plan going forward. Looking to address the back line. As soon as this pressure is felt towards B site. Yeah, totally different setup now from Loud, isn't it? I mean, last time Les actually dipped out the smoke, got pinged by the bolt, so Loud's numbers were weakened. Different stun, though. This stun is for more for sight. You know what's funny is that I... I might be wrong what I'm going to say here, but it feels like by having such a good execute on site, they actually made made the opponents play retake and they are not using utility on site anymore because they know that the opponents are scared. Oh my god, he almost got it. And you can see bumped towards this is not the question's all kind of but it's not good in that space here for me following this. Oh, it's still, I uh, really like the planning. I didn't see a lot of combos with the Sova ult this round. Like, an exa for example, with, with um, in the previous match against DRX, they had like this, um, um, they had this combo where Kildra lockdown goes in the underpass, right, in this position. Then you see a bridge stun. I can't remember his exact position, but he just stunned, I think from here. 
He just stuns like this. And then Sova ults. Uh, Sova ults this position as well. So essentially gets free kills on those stunned people. Like, because everyone is just like standing in this choke point over here. Um, safer bet. But they, they are not able even to like again, make that combo um, this, this game. To bring into this, based upon the uh, ult economy. But maybe next round with Bustio and Demon, actually, on the brim. Okay. Let's see if Bustio gets the timing right to maybe punish some of these players. Just to be working towards his ult as well. Let's see if that's a possibility. Trying to get towards those ult orbs as well. As I say, yeah, if Ethan actually gets Lord of Thunder on the next round, 3G. Looks very well. No, he's what he's two off. He needs the orb. They've had no confirmation of presence outside here. Knife won't find anything either. And maybe Bushi are going to try and sell him something over towards A, but you can see the intention from EG is going to be this eventual B finish. Less forced a little deeper here. Challenge. Oh shit! He yeah, actually you know dodged this stun do by accident. Yo, it is so funny because the stun is very deep, but they know that the showstopper pushes away the people into it. Like it's so it's so interesting because the stun it was in this spot, right? Where the players are currently. But if someone is standing in this spot over here behind the box and he hears the showstopper, he is literally running back. So he would be running into this into the stun. If you stun over here, you're not gonna hit anyone, and there's also a high chance you're gonna hit your own race. There's a lot of self-awareness with those micro micro utility being used, which I like very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who what happened to Kanzin that he got he could slow down that much. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, I want to see this. Demon stands Jenny. He hears three players going into can canteen. So when he stand, when does he make the decision to go for the ult? Just now. I'm not certain what triggers it. I mean, he knows about the three players like five seconds ago. And then the aftershock. Look. So they make like a they make a zoning combo. Literally, what happens here it is. is Brimstone covers this area, then aftershock, aftershock covers I think this area over here, and they zone people and box them in in this small area over here while Bustio is doing the flank. So the pressure from all of that utility should allow Bustio to get free kills because of that. Hands. It might be enough. This end scurrying away. Demon one's gonna catch Kalanzine. And the flag for Bustio. It's huge. Oh my god, EG. They had nothing but sheriffs, odds and ends, and one recovered rifle. And it's Aspas, one of the world's greatest, chasing down four players. Now he's being given nothing, Mike. They're giving him no quarter now. That's rifle in hand, but time ticking away here. <laughs> find it. What a ridiculous read. The adjustment here on this B site here, they know that Les and Sadak are respecting it. They're giving it up. They're waiting time for this back line to be very played. well played. And the response here is here. Command a response. Now they've broken the buy of Lab. Alright, they have Ethan's old and Kildry locked down. Let's see what's the plan. Go for a fact finding mission of their own. Make sure they don't fall to this because we've been seeing this aggression and Aspas is closing in. That's the first oh. good trade for Ethan, though. Not going to let that get too no counter because of uh, no, no counter utility because of the KO dagger. So, this is just a brawl this round. But they killed one of the ultimates, which is important. 3v4, they converted Aspas ultimate into an advantage. So, there's a there's a angle. Just to the back side like right way. now, really even though they are on three sheriffs, there's a there's a huge possibility of of winning this uh, this round just because of the number of players alive. The thing is, you can see that Les has the Viper ultimate, but there's no way he can commit to it because the moment he commits a Viper's ult on any side, the the other members uh, of the, sorry the attackers will just will just go somewhere else. I think Carson just got randomly spammed through the smoke. Missing the timing gives an opportunity. Let's wait. He strikes. That could be a second. Not just yet. Oh, he whiffed right. the okay. shot. Not out of woods just yet. Sadak and two is still alive. Uh, that was a bit of an overheat moment. I'll be honest with you. Doesn't get the reward. And now 
now just two yeah loud is just playing disconnected brutal. this is hard to try and work against another check comes good for it stability found for eg now up to eight and they get past those threats but that was stormy waters loud got sued how did eg make such a big turnaround they look bang on average in previous tournaments uh, different approach to the game like the way they play right now is of, of, obviously the some of the players have ridiculous aim like demon for example but the thing is they are winning right now because of good good fundamentals and utility macro the aim just supplements everything else like eg are playing well because they understand the macro objectives not because of hero plays they might clutch some rounds because of hero plays but all in the end, like, it doesn't really matter that much because those things are not consistent. While the utility and the map position that they have, that's the thing that builds up consistency. What the hell? Yeah, Jogama a little bit overheat. And Ethan coming in from Arcade with the ultimate, so... He just catches them, holy shit. Yeah, no, no map control on on arcade Les has the runners just run away any utility coming in wait stun into nothing so the the flash that Ethan did was to actually just buy like few seconds to make certain that everyone has to uh, clear every single angle now coming up close. Okay. I like this. Buys another piece of time. Doesn't matter if he kills it or not. It bought five seconds of time for the retake. Nice. Look Look at Ethan also understanding that the smoke is bad, right? Look, this is, this, this is those small things that matter the most. Right now, this smoke from Demon 1 is not good for the attackers because it leaks in from this wall. So it gives this space for the retake to go in and either explode into Arcade. This is why Ethan also holds this angle, right? Um, or just explode from all of those different directions. But also allow the player to stand in the smoke and literally spam the corner of the Jenny spot. So Ethan is not standing in that smoke because he understands that the smoke allows to do that. Just because the smoke is bad. Flank being noted, Ethan, super heads up. Still looking towards it, just sitting out that traditional angle tucked into the corner, but he's going for a hard time. <laughs> okay, then. More. He's out for blood frenzies and up for it, Ethan. Seals it, signs it, delivers it. EG. What a goddamn half. Beautiful reaction. All right, that was a really well played half. No, I actually, I think like we have to do uh, later on an EG half of attack vote review on on the fracture against the Rex because I feel like the one the one they played against the Rex was way better than this one. This one was still cool, but the one against the Rex I think was better coordinated and had better ideas than this one. But in general, EG looks really sharp on the macro level, and it's a pleasure to watch.